All right, mate, I used to be a man child. And in this video, this is raw, unedited and completely unscripted because I wanna communicate, I wanna tell you how I stopped being a man child, how I found real confidence in myself as a man that's mostly unshakable, how I became independent, fully independent from my father, from anyone, how I became a digital nomad living the laptop lifestyle, traveling where the hell I want, where, how I fired my boss, <laughs> how I basically live a lifestyle of complete internal and external freedom that I used to dream of. I used to, did, I used to never believe that this was actually possible for me because I was trapped in the mindset of a man-child. Now, the reason I'm talking about this today is because most of the people, like many of the guys on my channel have come to me, maybe you're one of them, they've come to my channel because they watched an old video of mine where I talked about Peter Pan syndrome. I gave you a bunch of signs that you are a man-child. Peter Pan syndrome is basically man-child, it's the same thing, right? You just feel like a boy trapped in a man's body. And back in the day, like on those videos, I made a couple of videos talking about how to overcome it. And I wasn't being fully truthful. There was a big part of this, the, the reason why I overcame it, that I didn't share with you. In these videos where I talked about how to overcome Peter Pan syndrome, I said things like, join a men's group, get therapy, do journaling, meditate, hit the, hit the gym, all this other stuff that you kind of knew already or you knew would be a good idea. But I left out this big fundamental part of it. In this video, I'm telling you exactly what it is. I'm telling you what it was, the main thing, that allowed me to become fully independent, psychologically, stop being so, like feeling like a, a prisoner in my life and in my mind, and with other people holding the keys to my prison. And this is how I overcame it. Now, just to tell you, just give you a bit of background, I'm gonna tell you where I came from because you, maybe you've not seen me before. Maybe this is all new to you. But this is mainly for my audience already, for you guys. So, I used to be, as I said earlier, a man-child. I used to be driven by trauma completely. I used to feel like I wasn't enough. I used to feel like I just wasn't capable or even deserving of living a good life, of being able to do fulfilling work and get paid for it, and to travel around the world and do what I want. There was this part of me that just kept on consistently holding me back and pulling me into cycles of procrastination, eating junk food, watching bullshit on Netflix and playing endless amounts of video games even when I knew that I should be doing something else, I couldn't help myself. I was like trapped in this hor horrible toxic cycle for a really long time. But why was I, like who was I dependent on? I was dependent on my father because I know that some of you guys are watching this and you still live at home. Not all of you, but some of you still live at home. Live at home, sorry, live with your parents, I mean. We all live at home. Um, but you live with your parents, which means you're dependent on them, okay? I was the same. So I lived, I was dependent on my father for a long time. I traveled, I left home multiple times in my sort of teens, in my late teens and my early 20s, but then I would always come back into the orbit of my father. Now, if you don't know about my relationship with my father, I made a video on it a couple of weeks back talking about this, and it wasn't great. I felt like I had hands around my neck. He was, I was in a prison of some creation and he was holding the keys. But I moved out. So I moved out multiple times, but eventually I moved out and lived with friends. This was okay for a while. That went to shit and then I moved out again and I lived in an apartment that my father was mostly paying for. My father filled the apartment just completely full of furniture. That he basically paid for everything in the apartment. It should be a good thing. It should have been a good thing, but it wasn't. It felt like I was stuck. It felt like I was under someone's thumb, as we say in the UK. It felt like I wasn't free because I wasn't independent. I wasn't paying for all this. I hadn't paid for all this. I hadn't really necessarily chose the decorations. I'm very grateful, obviously that my father did this. But it also felt like I was still a boy. I was still a child. And he was still paying for everything in the apartment. He was still giving, he was still paying like two thirds of the rent. So even though I, in some ways, 
felt better than I did before because I moved out of his house, I was still in his orbit. I was still a dependent child. And then what happened was I was in this apartment on my own trying to build a health coaching business. This was back in what? This was about four years ago, five years ago. I was trying to build a, a health coaching business because I was a personal trainer at the time. Didn't really enjoy it, but I, would, I desperately wanted to build an online income, an online business and travel the world. I wanted to live a more adventurous life because my life felt very monotonous. I was like stuck in this daily routine, this daily grind that I didn't like. And then I remember going to a coffee shop in my local hometown of home city of Derby at the time when I lived in Derby in the UK. And I was in this coffee shop and I remember just watching people working on their laptops. And I was thinking, holy shit, these guys work on their laptops. Like that seems so freeing. That seems like it, it, it resembled freedom to me and independence. These people can just pick up their laptop and they could be anywhere. They could be in Norway. They could be in Colombia. They could be in Malaysia. Like it, and I just thought that, that for me, that was like, that resembled a way out for me. I was like, holy shit. If I had that, I could be free of all the things that keep me stuck. And I'm really grateful to that guy back then because he had the right idea. The problem was I was trying to build a health coaching business and it wasn't working. <laughs> Something wasn't lining up. I was posting on Facebook all the time. I was DMing people constantly trying to get them to buy my coaching and it wasn't working. That was until I eventually got a job in Lisbon. <laughs> I got a job, I had another boss and I moved to Lisbon, Portugal from the UK. This was the start of another period of growth for me when I started building my skills. But there was a problem. It was a good job but it was still a job. I still had a boss. I still had all the same things that came up that kept me feeling like I wasn't fully living my own life. I basically was just living them out in Portugal instead. It was an upgrade, but it was also pretty, still, still a pretty restrictive situation. So I worked that job for a couple of years, but then I decided to say, fuck it. I'm going to go full in with my YouTube channel and my business. And that was one of the greatest decisions I ever made. Because that's when the period of growth really, really accelerated for me. It was a challenge. It was difficult. I had to become an online freelance writer. I turned that writing skill that I built through years of journaling into, and I was like, holy shit, I'm actually pretty good at writing now. So I put my, my work out there on Upwork and got a couple of jobs and I got the feedback that, holy shit, Oliver, your writing is incredible. And then I was making between four and five thousand dollars online from just writing scripts for other people's YouTube channels. It didn't take me very long. It took me like three hours a day to bang out a script sometimes. And I was being paid about between four and five K a month. That was on top of the income I was, I was bringing in from my coaching business, which was another two to three K. So all that together was bringing in about between six and eight K a month while I was traveling around, traveling around the world. And this is what I've been doing now for the past, what, four months, five months? Boom, new t-shirt. <laughs> How do you apply my whole journey to you? To escape, to break free of your current internal and external circumstances, if, you, if you're dissatisfied with your life, you need a strong enough vision to escape it. Because it's almost like the current situation, your current habits and routines, the longer you've been stuck in them, the more of a, a vortex it is, the more it pulls you out when you try to change it. So you need enough of a vision. We call this the, your North Star. My North Star all along was this goal. Now, if you resonate with the whole Peter Pan syndrome message and you are struggling to change your circumstances, the reason why a North Star is so important is because you need something to orient yourself towards. You need a better life to, you need a vision, man. You need a, a, a powerful enough goal that excites you and motivates you enough. Because you don't, if you don't have that, if you don't actually know where you want to go and you don't know what you want, then what you will actually do is you'll just, you'll do a little bit of this and then when it gets hard, you'll go back. When it, you'll do a little bit of this, when it gets hard, you'll go back. You'll have about 50 different unfinished projects that you've never really gone deep on. Can you relate to that? Because when it gets difficult, you go back because your vision isn't strong enough. If I didn't have back then this vision 
of creating this kind of life that I wanted, deep down, really wanted, then I would never have committed and devoted myself for long enough to actually make any difference. And it's not necessarily about the lifestyle, man. It's not about this. It's not about this at all. The goal is mostly, it mostly serves as just something to orient yourself towards that puts you on a path towards growth and personal development. It's almost like without that goal, you're kind of in ba a base camp at the bottom of a bunch of different mountains. And you're thinking, I could climb that mountain. I could climb that mountain. So you maybe take a few steps up one mountain and you're like, oh, this mountain's actually quite steep. I'm going to go back to base camp. It's not the right mountain. Oh, this mountain looks pretty cool. I'm going to go up there. And you don't ever really commit yourself, which means you never actually improve your skills and experience depth and change your circumstances. You never become a good mountain climber because you just, you're a good base camper but you're never actually climbing any mountains, okay? So you need that vision. And assuming that you value the same things that I do, freedom, personal growth, authenticity, adventure, creativity, self-reliance, independence. If you value all those things, then maybe you resonate with my solution. Maybe you resonate with the path that I'm going to present to you right now. Basically the path that you just heard me talk about, but I want to just condense it and make it really simple. You can monetize eventually your personal growth and your self actualization The digital world has made this possible for the first time for the masses, for free basically, for the first time in history. Certain creators in the past, they monetized and they made a, a vocation out of their self-actualization journey and that's why they were able to achieve such amazing things that's why they benefited society and humanity in really big ways like inventors and creatives and artists and stuff but now we're in a position where you can basically start an account and get your creative journey going and if you make your that journey the most authentic to you by writing about your interests then basically you attract people to you over the long term who really vibe with you then you can create products and services to them for them that solve their problems which are the problems that you solved in the past and you attract people like-minded people to you and people might say oh yeah we don't need more content on the internet or do I really like is this really contributing in a good way is social media not the enemy and stuff and you can make you can make a case for that right but what I'm saying is I believe what the world needs more than anything else are people who have come alive they've come online they've identified their interests and passions in life they solve their own problems and they devise new and authentic solutions to those problems that they solved and they share them with other people and they monetize it so they can sustain themselves throughout throughout the process I think everyone can do this so if you vibe with that what I suggest is that you start creating. You start creating immediately based on your interests. Pick three broad topics of interest, pick a vehicle, pick a platform, and you start creating. You, put, you cr start creating your personal brand. And along the way, what you're gonna notice is that your skills are gonna build. If you start creating content, just start writing articles on Medium or whatever, your writing's gonna get good you're gonna build that skill. And then eventually someone online is gonna want that skill. And then you can start offering that skill as a side hustle in the beginning and start generating more of an income, gradually start raising your rates to the point where it's like, oh, holy shit, I can, I can actually support myself. And if you value adventure and growth and exploration, like I do, and travel, then you can travel while you do that. But then there's also a problem, isn't there? If you are anything like me and you don't really like having a boss, <laughs> I really don't. It's part of my, my father wound is that I, I just associate any authority with like restriction and constriction. If you're anything like me and you don't want a boss, then eventually working as a freelancer, you're going to get bored of that as well. You're going to go like, I don't want to be told what to do, which is, which makes sense, which is why you build your free, you do your freelancer work, earning your income, and then maybe a couple of hours a day or whatever time you can allocate to that, you spend on your personal brand and eventually your audience will grow. And eventually you can create products and services that raise your income to the point where you can let go of your freelance work and you can do this.
So that's the, those, are the, that's the, those are the nuts and bolts of what you would do there. But why does this relate to your personal growth and development in, as, as an individual? So there are a few things in life that will grow you, that will grow you big time. There are a few things. One of them is death that happens like to the people around you and stuff. That, that puts you in contact with impermanence and loss and grief. That grows you up really fucking quickly because it reminds you of your own mortality. The second thing is a deep, 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 intimate, committed relationship because a committed relationship will mirror you to yourself. You can't escape yourself when you, your actions and words and behavior and stuff intimately impact another person and then they give you feedback on that. You can't escape it. Another thing is having kids, but I can't really comment on that. And another thing is building a business. That is the thing that anyone can choose to do at any given time. They don't need to wait for someone to die. They don't need to get into an intimate relationship just to grow themselves. They don't need to have a kid. But you can, in any moment, you can just go online and start a business straight away. You can start creating. And that will grow you. There is nothing, nothing that grew me, has grown me as a person more than trying to build this business since 2016. Nothing. And I've experienced a lot of shit, man. I've experienced death, trauma, <laughs> Jesus, you name it. I've lived about 60 years worth of life in my 31 years. And I still say that intentionally creating this business grew me more and helped me overcome my Peter Pan syndrome, my self-sabotage, my procrastination, my fears, my limiting beliefs. Nothing got, helped me get rid of all that and overcome my barriers internally than building this business. So the inner work stuff is fucking super important, all of it. But it's one half of the coin. Without, the inner, without a goal, your inner work becomes mental masturbation. It becomes watching endless YouTube videos and taking no action. It becomes reading all the books and having all the knowledge but never applying any of it. The fastest way you can grow yourself is if you start building your own thing and making it real. You get your reps in. You get real world experience. So if you want to overcome Peter Pan syndrome, I highly suggest you do that. Mate, that was my video. Take care and I will see you in the next one. Peace.